Stan Jibalisco here with just a little bit of a theoretical interlude in the Band Watch and Radio Adventure series from the Stargazer Ranch, Matitsi, Wyoming. Last night, March 8th, 2014, I talked to Russia on 18 megahertz with an antenna that's basically as you see here, an MFJ whip right there attached to the lip of big number eight which serves as the only ground system for this entire uh, apparatus coaxial cable 100 feet of RG8U or RG13 whatever that high grade stuff is the old fashioned stuff to the radio powered by a marine battery running 50 watts output the whip extended to 13 feet tall according to the formula 234 divided by the frequency in megahertz. That would give you the number of feet. So I had a quarter wavelength antenna and I had an almost perfect match, an almost perfect one-to-one -one SWR. Now the question is, what is the efficiency of an antenna like this? Well, when you have an antenna like this, you have radiation resistance in series with a loss resistance to give you the resistance of the entire system. The radiation resistance in theory of a quarter wavelength antenna is, and that is an absolute theoretical value, 37 ohms. What was the total resistance? Well, it had to be a purely resistive impedance of 50 ohms. So that means the loss resistance we can simply calculate as 13 ohms. Now that's not too bad considering that the only ground system for the whole antenna is that truck and the way that it would serve as a counterpoise at the frequency of 18 megahertz, not too bad. So what's the efficiency? Well, you add together the radiation resistance and the loss resistance, and then you divide the radiation resistance by the total resistance. So it's 37 over 50, or 74%. Well, that's not too terribly bad, really, considering, again, uh, how rotten that ground system is. The, the loss resistance, the entire loss resistance in that whole system had to be 13 ohms. It had to be, because the impedance had to be a pure resistance of 50 ohms. That's the only way you can get a one-to-one -one standing wave ratio. The radiation resistance has to be 37 ohms. That, that is a theoretical value to, uh, that depends on its dimension in free space. So 74%, so 37 of the 50 watts that I was putting out, assuming no loss in the feed line, and there really wasn't very much. It's 100 feet of perfectly matched RG8U, not very much. I might have been getting, you know, 35, 36 watts out into space to make those contacts. So that's not too terribly bad. And uh, obviously it worked. The guys gave me, you know, 559 signal reports. But that's all the stronger they really were. So things are working out pretty well. Of course, we've got a very good location. Quarter wavelength fully extended. That means there is no, no inductive loading in that thing. It wasn't shortened. It wasn't compromised in that way at all. So that's pretty good, although really, seriously, the best arrangement would be a half-wavelength vertical with an impedance matcher down there or something close to a half-wavelength. And I am awaiting a, an antenna tuner when I get back to the uh, home digs at uh, Leeds, South Dakota, and I may be able to arrange something like that so that I can get an even better portable arrangement. But of course... Again, this is a great QTH, the Stargazer Ranch. You can see in all directions. There's nothing around here to create human-made noise that would mess up the quality of the reception. So that's it from here. March the 9th, 2014, Stan Jibalisco, 
saying 73 and so long until next time.